Hey everyone, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Living and Loving with yours truly, Monique McCall, country music singer, songwriter, recording artist. And today I have joining me one of the most inspirational people of all time with a story that will touch your heart and surely change your perspective on life. Dennis Walters is one of only two golfers in history who have received the following honors, the PGA Distinguished Service Award, the PGA of America Award, the Bob Jones Award, the Ben Hogan Award, and in 2019, he received golf's highest honor when he was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. Dennis is a pioneer in adaptive golf and has changed so many people's lives. And I know today on this podcast, he will change yours as well. His journey may not have been what he envisioned, but he is happy to share in his words that if your dream does not work out as you originally planned, get a new dream. And he did just that. Welcome, Dennis Walter, certainly the epitome of living and loving. How are you today? I'm good, Moni. Uh, thank you so much for having us on today. And- it was very nice to meet you the other day in person. And it was such a gift. Thank you so much for your willingness to meet me. And I know we are going to have a special featured guest today, Gussie. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, he's in the green room. He's what? He's in the green room. Oh, is he in the green room? He's makeup and <laughs> getting ready. Really oh, fantastic. Good. I can't wait to see what he's wearing today. Uh, so I think he's just wearing his normal outfit. <laughs> Which is the best one of all. Yeah. Always I think for everyone, our normal outfit is always the best one we can adorn. So you were on the top uh, you were one of the top amateur golfers in the country and about to embark on your dream, which was to play on the PGA Tour. And then the unthinkable happened. Share with us what happened that day in 1974. Well, I was going out to meet a friend of mine to play golf. I was preparing to play in the PGA Tour qualifying. I had gotten to the finals a year before, and I was going to try again. Mm-hmm. And I was I was going out to meet them on the back nine. I was riding in an old three-wheel golf cart. I was going down a steep hill, and it had a turn to the right. It had these little blue stones on the road. It wasn't a paved road. And my cart started sliding, and that's about all I remember. I, I remember being on the ground, and I, I didn't have a scratch or anything, and I couldn't get up. And what had happened, I damaged my spinal cord, which left me paralyzed from the waist down. So I spent four months in the hospital. I spent four months in rehab. And I thought, actually thought I was going to get better, but I think they knew from the day, the first day that it was, that wasn't going to happen. And so I was laying in this hospital bed and I figured I would never even get out of that bed. And I figured if I get out of this bed, it was a weird bed. It looked like a Ferris wheel Mm -hmm. and every four hours they turned it. So they would put this, like an ironing board on your, like two inches from your face. And then they would flip the bed over. And so you'd be laying on your stomach. And it was strange, made a really weird noise. And I didn't realize how weird it looked until the day I got out of the bed. Mm -hmm. And I saw how weird it was. And it scared the heck out of me. And I know every person that came in to visit me saw the same thing. And so I figured I was never, if I got out of that bed, it would be a miracle. Mm-hmm. And so I, and I surely didn't think I could accomplish anything. And so one day I got out of that bed and I promised myself I was never given up. I was never quitting. And I was going to try to figure out a way to do something. And for me, that something was to figure out a way to play golf. And this is basically, I'm basically reciting 
what I said in the movie, the documentary that was made about me. Yes. So, because it, it's, it's the truth. I have no other words to describe it. But if you watch the movie, you'll hear me say the same words. Um, but anyhow, that's that's what happened. And I I went to rehab from there. And I confronted a doctor and I asked him, I said, well, what do you think is going to happen? And he goes, you're never going to walk again. And it made me cry. I was crying my eyes out. And I said, what about playing golf? And I, he goes, forget it. And so I said, again, this is from the movie, but it's true. I said two words to him. They weren't happy birthday. <laughs> said, I'm coming back to this dump one day and I'm hitting golf balls off your lawn across the street. There was a golf course right across the street. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to come up to this dump one day and I'm hitting them right into that golf course. And I did. How long of a drive was that? It wasn't that far, but it was, <laughs> it was across the busy street. I'll tell you that if you missed one, you were in trouble. <laughs> and, uh, but it was on a high hill and you're hitting downhill. It was, it was not a great feat to hit a ball that far, mm -hmm. but it was a great feat for someone who he had told to forget about it. And my dad was, my dad was, he was a pretty, I would say he was a pretty rough guy. He, he was in World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, he fought all the way from North Africa to Berlin by way of Italy. Mm -hmm. And he was, he, he was, he was really the, he, he was the main reason why I was able to do this. And my mom was equally as important. My dad went with me on the road for 17 years, but my mom was equally as important as is my sister till this day. Mm -hmm. So everybody thinks that that, that, that quote is the second biggest, uh, gets the biggest response in the movie. And everybody thinks it came from my dad, but it actually didn't. My mom used to say that. And uh, so I, it makes me smile because I can still hear her saying that. To me. And most of the time in a jesting way. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so. And she would say, say it for us. <laughs> She'd say, I got two words for you. Yes. <laughs> and <ain't> happy birthday. <laughs> you know, you go, come on, Ma, let's do something. She didn't want to do or something. Or, or you did something. And that was her way of getting you back on track. Because so, she would never say the, what you really mean. But she would say that. I'm going to start using that one. <laughs> I think it's, I listen, I, I think it's a great way to just break up whatever, whatever you're about to argue with mm -hmm. is probably a good, a good way to, to go. Now you were in bed for four months. I mean, obviously physically uh, in so much pain, uh, recovering, but mentally, what was mentally what, was worse. I know. And that's what I was going to say. It had to be almost worse, which is hard to even imagine what was going through your mind for months laying there thinking about your future? Um, I'm sure there were moments where you just were so uncertain. And what was that changing point for you where you realized, you know what, I'm going to get a new dream. Well, that didn't come for a while, but yeah. when I was, when I was laying in that, I was 24 years old and I was just about to where I, I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And this happened to me, and I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I have no, I I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I, I I had a reoccurring nightmare of an old, like an old Humphrey Bogart movie, where mm -hmm. the guy goes into the men's room and some guy gives him a towel. <laughs> the guy gives him like a nickel or something, mm -hmm. and I had that as a. I figured that's like where I'm headed. Uh, there's no way. Uh, how could I accomplish anything in this condition? I was so, man, I was so low. I was, I'm sure, listen, everybody has something that's bad. And I'm sure I didn't have the worst thing ever. But for me, it was the worst possible 
thing. Mm -hmm. I was I, whatever, however the bottom is. I was I was there for a very long time, and so. And how did you pull yourself up? For I so many people, that. that's so hard. You have so much grit, so much determination. Where did that come from? If I had the answer to that, I, I would probably be living in a bigger house, <laughs> in, a, in a bigger neighborhood or something. But I, listen, I, I, I had all this. This is all I know about this. I had all the love and the support mm -hmm. that anyone could ever ask for. Okay? Mm-hmm between my mom and my dad and my sister and my friends. And there's no way I could have done this by myself. Mm -hmm. However, it, it's basically up to you. I never remember any of these encouraging folks ever hitting a golf shot for me. I, I had to go out and do that myself. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I had somebody, a lot of people in my corner, gave me gave me the momentum to keep going because there, there there were so many days that were so bad and there there's this thing never goes away it, i never get a day off from this and so mm -hmm. you, you basically have to make up your mind that this is what you're going to do if you can have some sort of a crystal clear picture to follow I think that's that's very helpful. I, that I always had that. I always had a vision of myself playing golf again. I, I didn't know how I was going to do it because I never heard of anybody playing golf like I do. Mm -hmm. But I always had a crystal clear picture of in my mind of what I wanted to do. And then when I started doing it, and and experimenting with a way to to play golf. And, and, when this happened to me, everyone said, too bad, Dennis, you'll never be able to play golf again because you can't stand up. And I said, they're right. Mm -hmm. So I started hitting golf balls sitting down. I tried, first thing I tried was my wheelchair, and then I we made a seat that swiveled. It's on the passenger side of the golf cart. Mm -hmm. That's how I got back on the course again. So... Now, I remember in your story, your father was one of the first to go out there with you. You were in your chair and you went to hit. You said, I'm going to fall forward. So then he went and got a rope. Yes, we were watching. I came home when I was in rehab the second four months mm -hmm. of this mess. You were allowed to go home on weekends. So I went home on the weekend and I was sitting there watching a golf tournament on TV that a lot of my friends were playing in and I thought I should have been playing in it too. So naturally I was upset. I was crying my eyes out. And I don't usually cry a lot, but this was way too much. I went home one weekend and I punched a hole in the wall. <laughs> and I was Oh, man, and so low and so angry. So I'm sitting there, and my dad says, come on, champ, let's go hit some golf balls. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how do you reckon I'm going to do that? And he goes, out of your blanking wheelchair. So there was, down the street, there was a little clubhouse that they people had in the neighborhood had set up mm -hmm. where you could hit balls in the wintertime. This was in New Jersey. So we go down there and I'm in the I'm in my chair and I took my favorite golf club with me and he gives it to me. He says, Here, go ahead. And I said, I don't think I can do that because I'm too low in this chair. I'm gonna hit my leg. So he went home and he got a pillow. I used to watch TV by putting it on the floor up against the couch. And it had arms on it. So he brought the pillow home. He folded the arms under the pillow. It was a big, wide pillow. Mm -hmm. And he put, picked me up and put, put it underneath me. And I said, that's better. I said, but I, I have no balance. I'm paralyzed from the waist down. I have no mm -hmm. way to hold myself. So he went and got a big strap. He tied it around the wheelchair. And I said, that feels good. And I took a swing and it 
it wasn't half bad. But the chair almost tipped over, and he said, don't do that again. I'll be right back. Came back for the third time, and he tied the, the string or the rope to a pole, and I started swinging. It was reasonable. It was kind of, you know, kind of good to be doing that again. And then uh, I came back the next week, and we did it the next weekend. The third weekend, I said, I want to go hit one mm -hmm. outside. So I want to see where it's going. So he goes, okay, about 38 degrees. And he wheels me out onto the lawn. And we go through the same routine with the pillow, the strap, and the rope, tied it to a tree this time. And I swung, and I, I, didn't, I didn't hit it very good. And I was a little angry. The next one I hit halfway. But the third one I hit absolutely perfect right down the street, over the cars, didn't hit anything. It was perfect. And I hit the ball right in the middle of the face. My dad's jumping up and down. He's high-fiving me and everything like I was the U.S. Open. And at that very moment, I realized that when I hit the ball right in the middle of the face, it still felt good. So I figured I should, I like that. I figured I should try to see where this would take me. And I, I had a friend who owned a golf course in Florida, mm -hmm. Papa Joe Beach. And he, he invited me down to stay for a week. I mm -hmm. stayed six months. And I was living in this little cart barn, a room right off the cart barn. Mm -hmm. And so every I met this guy who, uh, his name was Alec Turnier. He was an old bro from Jersey. Mm -hmm. And every day he would tee golf balls up for me. And one day I said, I'm sick and tired of doing this. I'm going to go play. So two high school kids pushed me over to the first tee. And I, they, they had to pick me up and put the pillow under me, tie the, the strap. And we had the, the rope tied to uh, something you would anchor a dog leash to. Mm -hmm. And so I hit a good shot down the middle. We took everything apart, went down the fairway, hit the next one up pin high, about 20 feet from the pin, mm -hmm. and they were going to put the pillow under me again, and I said, forget it. I leaned out, putted sideways off the wheelchair, two-putted for a par. So every I, the first, the clubhouse was right behind, everybody saw what was going on, the people that were there. So I went in there, I was cheering, hey, that's great. You know, I, said, I said, well, yeah, I, I made a par. This first hole in golf I played in nine months. Oh. One of the best bars ever made. But it took me 45 minutes. It's going to take me like 12 hours to play 18 holes like this. So the, my friend who was teeing the golf balls up for me, he saw me sitting on a bar stool. And that night, he cut the leg, or that next day, he cut the legs off the bar stool and he put it on the golf cart. And that's, that's really when I got back to the course. That's when you what? That's really when I got back on the course and was able to start playing again. And and you've become the best uh, trick shot golfer of all time. And you have. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but that's you, that came that came next. That was yes. not what I had in mind. That was that was I got a new dream part. Mm hmm. And, and so, how did that how did that come next? And and I know you're then once the whole thing developed, your father called Jack Nicholas, and then next thing you know, you because Jack Nicholas uh, oh McGregor, you got signed by McGregor. Well, what happened was I started playing golf every day, and it was very frustrating. Mm -hmm. It was at one on one side of the coin, it was wonderful it was in it was just magnificent because mm -hmm. i was playing golf again but the first day i sat in that seat i knew right away i was never going to play as well as i did before and that really really bothered me a lot and i was going crazy i was i mean i was just i was i was pretty close to out of my mind because so how many how many moments came up where you just wanted to give up, but then you had another good shot and you knew you had to continue? Well, let's put it this way. Having grown up being a golfer, 
Mm-hmm. I'm used to I'm used to hills and it peaks and valleys. Mm-hmm. I'm also used to the fact that every golfer who ever played at one point he's gonna he says I, I'm giving it I'm quitting I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not doing this anymore. Never happened to me. As 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 bad as I felt because I couldn't do as well as I did before. I still reminded myself that at least I had the opportunity and it was up to me to see how good I could get. Mm -hmm. And one day I said, I'm not looking at this correctly. I, I should never look back as to how I used to do, but how am I doing today? And Mm -hmm. can I get any better? And once I, kind of took the pressure off myself and started anew. Then I saw my progress. I was making progress. And I had no nobody to show me how to do it. I I I think I I never heard of anybody doing this. But I it goes back to the old adage of, you know, each day is a new day. Yes, I, I think so. And I had to change. I enjoyed working hard. I've always had that. I've always had a good work ethic and I don't have the give up gene. So I never got that. Mm-hmm. And so I started to get better. And then when this happened to me, there were three golf courses that had benefit tournaments for me mm-hmm. to help me out. And the year I started playing golf, I said to my dad, I said, why don't we go back to these places and show them that I'm playing golf again? Mm -hmm. He goes, that's a good idea. So the first two, I just, I I went up there and I was on the first tee and I told people what I was doing and what was different now and what was the same. And I think everybody appreciated the fact that I, I, I showed them what I was doing. And then the next one, I said, I want to dress this up a little bit. When I was a kid, I saw Paul Hahn Sr. He was the most famous trick show guy mm-hmm. in the 50s and 60s. And I watched him give one of his shows. I was in the first row, and mm-hmm. I was watching, and I was taking it all in. But I never said, wow, I'd like to do that. Mm-hmm. I never, never thought of that. I wanted to be a player. So I said to my dad, could you make me a tee that's three foot high? Yeah, sure. So he made me a tee that was three foot high and I did it. I hit a shot off of that. That was the only thing different I did, but I got, then I did the other two and I got a way bigger response. Mm-hmm. So then I, I said, well, maybe I'll just try and do a few more. So I, the PGA had a film of Paul Hahn doing a, one of his shows at the 1960 PGA Championship at Firestone in Ohio. And so I watched it on my wall. You had to rent it. You had to rent a projector, a 16 millimeter projector. And I watched it on my wall in my bedroom. And I kept saying, I know I can do that one. That looks easy. No, forget it. Uh, Maybe. So I started going out and doing these for my own amusement. Mm -hmm. And I guess one thing led to another, and I I met uh, one of my mentors, Dr. Gary Wyron, who is a very one of the greatest guys I ever met. He 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 was a PGA golf professional who wrote the book on how to teach golf. Mm-hmm. And he, he he worked for the PGA at that time. Had a lot of connections. Got me a new golf cart. And got me my first show, 1977, a PGA merchandise show. It's a big trade show, and everybody's there. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started. I did. I was going nowhere fast mm-hmm. in the, about 1980 or 81 or so. Somewhere in the early 80s, my dad wrote a letter to Jack Nicklaus about trying to help his son knowing full well that Jack Nichols was a wonderful family man. Mm-hmm. He owned the McGregor Golf Company and mm-hmm. McGregor signed me and that's when I got a new dream. Because then I was I was in business. This really added a lot 
to my business. I got way more shows because they would send me everywhere. And usually when we went and did one, somebody else would want me to do it. And pretty soon I was doing 100 shows a year. I've done over 3,000 performances, and I've traveled over 3 million miles doing this. And the documentary that they made basically chronologically chronologically tells my story of my laying paralyzed in a hospital bed 47 years ago to my induction into the World Golf Hall of Fame. And the real, the real, for me personally, the real story to this is when I started doing this, I did it because I loved golf and I couldn't see living my life without having golf in it. I told you, I had a crystal clear picture of this. And then as I started to do it, immediately people would say I was helping them. I would get, I, I got telegrams. This mm -hmm. was so long ago. But I'd get letters. I would get phone calls. Now it's emails, tweets, and Facebook. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. People said I was helping them. I was giving them encouragement, hope, and inspiration. Mm -hmm. And right away I realized these were three of the most precious gifts you can give anyone. Yes. So what started out is something I did all for myself to cope with it, what I considered to be a hopeless situation actually came full circle, came back to me as a gift. And so, yeah, my original goal was to make it in this world on my golf skill. Mm -hmm. And I did it. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. And, and you've done it. You've done it with so much heart. Well, that, that's the thing, the thing that's, that's made it even better is I, I got all these people who mm -hmm. I've been able to positively influence, maybe only by a little bit, yes. but that's made it even better. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm hitting golf shots, I'm telling bad jokes, mm -hmm. and I'm giving an uplifting message. That's really what our show is all about. Mm -hmm. And it's about golf, yes, but it's, it's about a lot more than that. And at every show I do, people laugh, they cry, and they think. And that, that's what we're going for. This is the Jim Valvano theory. Mm -hmm. In a day, you can laugh, you can cry, you can think. That's a full day. And so um, I, as I get older, I feel much better about the fact that I have been able to do something positive, And in some small way, I've been able to make a difference. And that, to me, is very satisfying. Well, you make a difference in one life and you make a world of difference and you have made such a world of difference for so many uh, by leading with heart and passion and doing what you love and loving what you do. And that's what uh, this podcast is about. You've moved the emotions of so many of your fellow men and women. And I always tell everyone who asks me, you know, Monique, what's your ultimate goal as a country music singer songwriter? And I said to do what I love and love what I do, but ultimately move the emotions of my fellow men and women. That's the most beautiful gift that I can give with the talents that God gave me. And you're doing just that. And we are so grateful to have you here in our community. And I'm so blessed that you joined me today. Such a gift. And I know that as a golfer, one of the most important things that you need to have to succeed is you have to have great focus. And that is one of the attributes that you possess, but not only in the gift of golf, but also in the gift of training dogs, which takes the same focus. And you have incorporated your sweet babies and now your newest baby, Gussie, into your show and you have really changed so many uh, lives of, of not only people but in the animal world and i know that you have gussie there with you today is he going to join us for a moment there he is. Hi, Gussie. <laughs> Let's get him in the camera. Can you get it? There, there he is. Gussie, how was the wedding the other night? Oh, he got all dressed up in his tux. And <laughs> it was awesome. 
so was great. A lot of pictures taken of him. Uh, I'm sure there were. Well, the two of you, you're a good looking pair. <laughs> yeah, he's he was found in a ditch in Puerto Rico. And uh, now he's big time. He's been in a, mo in, in a movie and performs in our show. Mm -hmm. And I always say that anybody looking for a dog or a cat, an animal shelter or rescue group is a great place to begin your search. And yes. I've had five rescue dogs and everyone's been great. I think he's going to be the be the my goat. So. He is beautiful. Time. It was so it's funny. Like Tom Brady, the greatest of all time. It was so funny when in the pre-production meeting the other day, I asked you what kind of dog he was, and I loved your answer. Yeah, he's a not sure. A go, not, not sure. I never heard of that. <laughs> I no, he's. I'm not sure. I got him at the pound. I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, he's a beautiful, not sure. And and it was so great to see uh, when I was uh, there with you the other day that uh, he, he possesses so many uh, incredible uh, qualities. He's a, he's a great uh, conservationist. He, he knows how to recycle. Gussie, I can't believe you know how to recycle. That was unbelievable. And yeah. he's also a great mathematician. Very good at math. He's an excellent golfer. I taught him to play golf. That was on my to-do list when I mm -hmm. when I was looking for a dog. It took me nine months to find him, and the fourth I wrote down everything I wanted to teach him, and the fourth thing was how to hit a golf ball, mm -hmm. and he can do it. I so, know he can do it. I saw him do it right before really you and, I, and then he went and collected all the balls himself as well. Yeah. It's real neat. And, so, uh, so Gussie, yeah. I have a, I have a question. Do you mind if I ask him a question? Yeah, I have to put him on his chair so he'll be comfortable. Go ahead, Gussie. Hey, listen. Huh. Can he hear me? Yeah. Let me just see if he's ready. You ready? You ready for a question from Monique? Hey, you good? Give me one. Come on, you can do better. Go ahead. Oh, he's ready. He's ready. Gussie, what is one plus two? Go ahead. <laughs> <There you are. laughs> and Gussie, I love this one. What is Mickey Mantle's number? Go ahead. <laughs> There it yeah, is. <laughs> Maybe he couldn't hear me so well, and he's probably not used to doing this over virtual, but I know he answered seven the other day. Way to go, Gussie. He got the last one out. <laughs> he got it, yes. Yeah. That he is- very rarely misses. I know, it's unbelievable. Is there another question you want to ask him that is super awesome? Um, how many tires on a car? <laughs> go ahead. about the spare you got a spare <laughs> yeah that's, that's a full spare too. <laughs> no donut and i know you're not going to tell us how you taught him that i tried to ask you that question the other day yeah. how you gave me access to the internet what right. a life you have studies a lot too he studies yeah he, he he does he know how to google oh yeah yeah he, <laughs> he's big into that so, Gussie, can you tell me uh, where people can find uh, Dennis Walters? <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> I was hoping you would. Yeah. The Dennis Walter. Well, our website is DennisWalters.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Dennis Walters Golf Show. We're easy to find. And... And so DennisWalters.com, and where is your next show? Locally, right here in West Palm Beach, this Saturday at the first tee of the Palm Beaches. It's a Dyer Park, oh. right by the VA, in uh, off 45th or Blue. And what time will you be there? 
10 o'clock. 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry I'm going to miss it, but I'm going to have to catch you after the new year because I'm headed out of town. Mm. Well, hopefully we'll have a few more around where we probably won't be traveling. Anymore. We'll be local in Palm Beach County and probably Broward County. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, come, come and see us. Absolutely. I'm so excited to come and see you and Gussie and give you a super big hug. And I'm so grateful that you joined me today. I do have a couple more questions for you because I love the story that you shared with me the other day about getting the first call about the possibility of being inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame and sitting there and waiting what was it oh, was it about a week you waited to find out whether or not uh, that was going to come to fruition yes i got a i got a phone call on october the 12th in 2018 and it was from the world golf hall of fame a fellow by the name of jack peter mm -hmm. and jack said to me dennis you're a finalist for the world golf hall of fame uh and that what did that feel you. like what did that feel like when he said that well when he said it to me i thought it was i thought it was wonderful but i figured i got no shot I, i'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna get in they're only taking my i think they took five people in our class and there were a lot more than that nominated and there were 16 mm -hmm. people who decided who was getting in there. And mm -hmm. in my mind, these other people were a lot more well known than, than I am. Now, I, every, a lot of people know who I am, but there's a whole lot more that have no clue. And I figured these people from Australia and Japan and China, and Europe, I figured mm -hmm. no shot. So. Well, they don't I, have I, the best trick shots of all time. So. Well, <laughs> I just thought that it would be a very uphill push for me to get in. So all week I tried not to think about it. But it's like if I tell you don't think of a pink elephant, the first thing you think of is a pink elephant. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting there and I was trying not to think about it. And I was getting my nice to be nominated speech ready. And Right, it, right as he predicted, at noon the next week, October the 19th, I see his number popped up on my phone. I said, uh oh, this is it. Mm -hmm. And so I, he calls me and says, Hi, Dennis, this is Jack Peters. Immediately I hear, Hi, Dennis, this is Jack Nicholas. And mm -hmm. it, Immediately after that, hi, Dennis, this is Gary Player. So there was a split second, and I said to myself, I said, if these two guys are calling me, they, they're not going to call me up and say, hey, you were close, nice try. I'm thinking this has got to be good. Mm -hmm. All that went through my mind in the split second, and they said, we're calling to congratulate you you've just been inducted into the world golf hall of fame and i started crying wow and i was really and you know what it sounds like i cry a lot but i, I really don't <laughs> but um when i stopped crying i said wow you two must have done some sales job on these other people i said because i'm betting that nobody even heard of me and Jack Nicholas goes, no, that's not true, Dennis. He said, the 16 people in that room had definitely heard of you. Mm -hmm. But after the two of us got done, they heard a heck of a lot more. And so. And Gary Player. I, Gary Player. I have to thank so. Gary Player. And he's been a, a wonderful help and a wonderful influence for me. Mm -hmm. And Jack Nicholas. Both of them standing up for me, and I'm told Gary was emotional about it, mm -hmm. and uh, just just wonderful to have the support of these two. These were my advocates. Yeah. So in in retrospect, I'm thinking, 
Well, had I known that, I would have been laughing all week. I would say, I got no problem. I'll get in in a second because if Gary Player and Jack Nicholas mm -hmm. are at this meeting and they're going to stand up for me, Mm -hmm. Who's going to disagree with that? <laughs> so well, and 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 we can't disagree with them. And Gary Player said something on your interview, and I don't remember it verbatim. You might be able to fill in the blanks for me, but about you being the what was it the the most influential or? Uh, he he said I was the most deserved person ever to be inducted. Yes, into the World Golf Hall of Fame. I mean, those he exaggerates words. a little sometimes. I don't think so. I, I, I can have tell to you this. Care. Whatever he says, it's from his heart. And he, yes. He is, he's a wonderful person and, a, and been a very, mm -hmm. very nice friend to me. We played the golf tournament together and we, we talk often. And I told him this the other day. I said, when I was a kid and I was watching Big Three Golf, it was Arnold Palmer, Jack Nichols, and Gary Player. I'm a, I'm a kid, and I'm watching this on TV. And we really had very few golf programs on. This was something made for television. And these guys, these three were the whole, they were the golf world. Mm -hmm. And years later, fast forward years later, I, I talk to them all the time. I, I see them, or I got their cell phone number, and I talk to them. And I'm thinking, how in the world is that even possible? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it's a lot of the things I've done mm -hmm. are, for me in my world, are are incredible. My I, my favorite. A lot of times, people ask me, "You've done over three thousand performances. Where's your what, what's your favorite show of all time?" And it's actually tied for first. I did one at St. Andrews, and I did mm -hmm. one at Augusta National. And so those are my favorites, and I don't think they'll ever be moved out of there. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a third one someday, tied for first, but those are my two favorite uh, shows. Uh, but I, 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 I think I've had a view of the golf world that almost nobody or very few people have because... Mm -hmm. I've been to the very best places. I've been to places that were not so great, but people love golf and they're out there playing. And I've mm -hmm. done these things at supermarket openings, car mm -hmm. dealerships. I have uh, wow. met four presidents, movie stars, all the every famous golfer just about in my lifetime. I've played with them or worked with them. I've done 30 clinics with Tiger Woods. And uh, certainly wishing him well. I know, and you were inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame before he, before he. Yeah, that was that's the second. <laughs> that's the that's the most. Uh, that's the that's that line gets the biggest response of in the movie. Get a new dream. That's mm -hmm. that was. Uh, it's gonna actually it's gonna be shown on Peacock the last week in December. It was on the Golf Channel. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Peacock and you go to golf, the Golf mm -hmm. Pass channel, that's where you'll find it. Someplace the last week in December. Mm -hmm. But when I was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame, Tiger Woods came to my golf course and I was over there hitting golf balls. And he came right over and said, wow, Dennis, congratulations. That is quite an accomplishment to be mm -hmm. inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. And I said, yeah, who'd ever think I'd get in before you? And then he started <laughs> laughing big time. So that was the line I used in my speech for induction. Can you believe I'm in the World Golf Hall of Fame before Tiger Woods? <laughs> so, uh, now, he's going to be inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame this coming March. So I'm going to try and ask him if he'll say, can you believe Dennis Walters got in before me? <laughs> it would probably it'd be like a private joke, but... <laughs> or for anybody who went to see my speech, but I don't think he's going to do it, but I think he'll get a good laugh when I tell him that. <laughs> well, maybe he'll surprise you. That would be, that would be beyond cool if he did that. But. And what a fantastic story you have. A lot of twists and turns and surely a big surprise for you. You, every night 
when you go to bed, looking back on that fateful day in 1974, what runs through your mind when you look at where you are today? Oh, uh, well, honestly, I'm still pretty mad about the whole thing. Mm hmm. It, it, I wish it never happened. Yeah. But, and I, and I wish that because there are so many other things I could have done in, in my life that I'm incapable of doing. And I'm not talking about any grandiose things. I'm talking about walking on the beach and feeling the sand between your toes. Mm -hmm. And uh, just little things like that. But I miss the fact that I could uh, see what I could accomplish, the golf courses I could have played. And then that's one side of me. But this, the other side of me is extremely proud of myself. Because I think I maxed out on exact on what was possible. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, no, I didn't think anything was possible. Mm -hmm. So one side of me feels like that. But everything I do is really difficult. It's magnified, and the difficulty getting out of bed for me is a project. Mm -hmm. Getting dressed and getting the simplest things for you are probably the hardest things for me, mm -hmm. and it's frustrating to watch. I used to watch people. I used to be, I would observe people right, and they would be like wiggling their toes or something. And I'd say, mm -hmm. well, how much skill does that take? And mm -hmm. I can't do it. And um, so there's, a, there's still a lot of darkness, but it just depends on what shade of blue it is. Mm -hmm. Light blue, I can handle medium blue i got that but on days when it gets to be dark blue it's really frustrating and i try to keep those days to a minimum and i basically made up my mind a long time ago that this was not going away and it wasn't going to get any better mm -hmm. and so i should try and make the best of it and i did that to me is the most satisfying thing i've done so how do you get how do you get from a dark blue day to a light blue day and into the light? Well, I think your mind is your strongest muscle. Mm -hmm. And if you can train your mind, you can overcome a lot of things. And I've been in this situation for 47 years, and I think maybe I haven't seen everything, but I've seen almost everything. So I have a reference of knowing that eventually and hopefully the shortest time period will elapse but the tide will turn mm -hmm. and i'll go be going back to either normal or light blue mm -hmm. light blue for me is easy yeah. light blue for me is is a snap if i'm a little down uh, that, that's like nothing that's like mm -hmm. it, everything is basically factored in mm -hmm. and so the, the little things, the little frustrations really don't bother me much anymore because I've been living this thing for 47 years. And when I get to one of the really, if something's really bad, then I, I just try to be patient and ride it out and, and try to do something else that's positive that will offset that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, a lot of this has to do with the fact that I play, I play a game that you can never play perfectly. There mm -hmm. are always bad shots, and mm -hmm. you have to recover from them. Kind of like life, right? Right. Well, that's how I translated mm -hmm. my golf life into trying to get over this life that I have now. And everybody thinks I'm a real upbeat, happy person. But, mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I, I think I'm a world-class actor. Because I'm able to function yeah. while still being upset and unhappy and whatever has caused me to be that. But I know from experience that almost every time there they'll, they'll, will be light and the, the sun's coming up tomorrow mm -hmm. and uh, 
3 billion people in China really don't care what's happening to me. So I'm just trying to focus on what I can control, what I can do that's positive, knowing that it's... Knowing that life will lead you it's to... It's going to get better. Will lead you back to the happy place, ultimately. Yeah. I, mean, I, would, you know, I would say, listen, this is like a lot of other things. It's easy to talk about and hard to do. Mm -hmm. But if you can... If you can just have a good, positive picture. For me personally, I, I use, I, I use, I like to use my imagination to create a picture, whether it's hitting a golf shot or trying to work my way out of something uh, that's unpleasant. I try to picture the good stuff and mm -hmm. see what happens. That, that's that's how I do it. I I just. I, I don't know any other way. I just I just try to have a good picture. Mm -hmm. Like when I was teaching him, my dog how to do a certain thing. I knew I, I knew exactly what I wanted it to look like. Mm -hmm. I just had to get him to buy in on it. And it's the same thing with golf. When you have a golf shot, you have to picture what what do you think this is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I do. Yes, your mind can always paint a bad or beautiful picture, and it's up to you. I, I agree with that. And you, you share the message of you believe that everyone should at least once in their lifetime do something that they believe to be impossible. Yeah, I think that is... I, I think that is so true. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do this golf show and I'm trying to encourage people to reach for their dreams, strive for excellence and do something positive in their life that they didn't think they could. Something that they believe is impossible. And they sh you should never have anyone tell you that you can't do something like that doctor to me, did to me. And Never let anyone tell you that your dream is impossible. And, the and good most part, especially, most especially yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's a hundred percent right. And and the other thing is, and this is it, this is the big this is the big thing. This is what I tell people. If you only you're gonna be here for an hour, if you only take one thing away, take this. If your dream doesn't work out, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Because the solution is simple. Get a new dream. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is that takes the pressure off. Because, hey, doesn't work. I get, I'll try something else. But you yeah. have to give it a good shot. You, have, you just can't, you know, phone it in. You have to give it a good shot. And if it doesn't work, don't, don't worry about it. You'll find, some, find something else. Don't give up but find something else and preferably find something that you like to do. Mm -hmm. See, for me, I do something I, I love to do every single day. Mm -hmm. I would do it for nothing. But the fact that people pay me to do it, mm -hmm. well, that's, that's okay. I'm, I'm, at this point in my career, I want to go to places where people want to hear what I have to say and, Watch what I have to do. I, I, you know, the, the, the money is another thing, but at least, you know, I'm a professional golfer and I hadn't hit the lottery, so I have to charge. So if you do what you love and you do with a heart, the money will follow. I, I think I, I, I always, I never thought, I think any really successful person, I don't think they're thinking about the money. I mm -hmm. think they're thinking about this is what I really like to do. And whatever happens, at the worst case, I'm doing something I really love to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, 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 I think that's the real key to life is to find something you really like to do. And if you can get someone to help you make it through this world on that skill, Mm -hmm. that's that's it that's to me that's the ultimate because it most is. of the time you'll be happy you're doing what you want to do and um 
you, you, your most important asset is your health. If you have good health, you're a millionaire anyhow. Yes. And if you can uh, do something that keeps you happy and it keeps your mind continuously working, then all of that is is uh, gravy. That's just like, uh, that's a bonus. So I always was, well, I always knew I wanted to do something in golf. After this happened to me, it was a little sketchy as to how that was going to work. Mm -hmm. But um, I always knew I would do something in golf because that's the thing I really like to do the most. And so I was, I was lucky. I was unlucky that this happened to me, but I was lucky that I had a good support system mm -hmm. and I knew what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I just did it in a different way. Well, someone told me once, lucky is for those who are unprepared and you prepared yourself so well and you are one of the greatest golfers in my heart of all time. And I look forward to seeing your trick show coming up very, very soon. And I love that you shared with me, and I don't know if you're willing to share this today, but you did share with me that you have another new dream. Are you willing to share that today? Oh, yeah. The uh, I did a show the other day, and uh, it was for combat wounded soldiers. Mm -hmm. And I told them, this was like the day after it was announced, the United States Golf Association has announced that they're going to have the U.S. Adaptive Open. Now, what is that? That's the U.S. Open. That's a national, uh, mm -hmm. a national championship for those with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And there are various categories such as amputees. And then it's broken down further, whether it's an arm amputee mm -hmm. or a leg or below the knee so there are various categories so those with similar disabilities play against each other and they're one of the categories is the seated golf category which is the one i'm in and, mm -hmm. and ho i like to think that i was the first one that started this and a lot of people who came after me saw my example as a pioneer and they're out playing golf too. Because if you're sitting in a wheelchair, one of the last things I think you would think of is playing golf. Yeah. But if they see somebody else do it, then they think, well, I could probably do that. So they're having the U.S. Adaptive Open. Wow. I mean, this is a historical event. This is. And um, it's like the first U.S. Open was in 1895. So really, it's kind of like that. It's the first one. And so... I, this is totally different from what I do. Mm -hmm. I really don't play a lot of golf. And I'm, you know, I'm 72 years old, and I haven't played a golf tournament in 47 years. But monumental task that it is, I'm all in. I'm getting ready to go. I'm, this is the third day I've been preparing for it. And so, so, what so I said to them now was, that you gave up your, your secret that you paint the picture what is the picture that you're painting <laughs> i don't want to get ahead of myself <laughs> okay. I, I've, I've talked about it with myself but i'm not i'm not, doing, I'm not revealing that okay it's too obvious but i was giving my show to the mm -hmm. wounded soldiers and the people that were there gary player was there and i said to them as i say in every show if your dream doesn't work out that's okay. Get a new dream. And then I go, guess who has a new dream? And so, guess who has a new dream? And I am so excited for this dream. And I'm going to be there cheering yeah, it's in, you It's, it's in July. I have a long time to prepare, but I'm getting, I'm getting all my ducks in a row. And I'm going to try and give it my best shot because I really want to do this even though I know what an enormous task of energy and preparation it is, I think I think it will be fun, a lot of fun, I think, to go through the process of, 
of in getting ready because that mm -hmm. the preparation is really what produces a positive outcome mm -hmm. and so you have to be prepared you have to practice and see what happens you have to have persistence and passion all and of then, those and then you have success are, that's it five p's that's it so it's it's and, it's going to be very interesting because i have to decide well do i want to spend my energy doing my shows do i want to i have to play golf almost every day to get ready for this thing so i i'm kind of trying to figure it out what how to budget my time mm -hmm. and what i really want to do I, i'm thinking about maybe taking a little bit of time off this is in july so i could probably probably take some time off before but as soon as it's over i'm going to try to start scheduling everything after that because i'll go back in all in for that what i'm also hoping is that I personally think this is going to be a big hit. I think it's going to be very popular. And what I hope happens is that some companies will see the merit in this and they'll want to sponsor their own tournament that's like this, but it'll be you know, sponsored by Coca-Cola or somebody. Mm -hmm. Somebody like that or a company that wants to see what's possible because basically what I'm trying to do in my show is I'm trying to show people what's possible, not only in golf, but in life itself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's something good. I think that's something positive. And I, I really want to, I want to keep doing this until I really can't do it. And I, I don't know when that's going to be, but I have two criteria. I want to keep doing this as long as I can do it the way I, I know it's supposed to be done. And I, I always want to keep doing it as long as I enjoy it. Because mm -hmm. this has been an enormous amount of work or it's been an enormous amount of effort, blood, sweat, tears, whatever you want to put into it. But I've, I've never actually looked at it as work. If this ever got to be work, I would pack it in in a second. But I, I, I still can't. I can't wait to go practice today. I, I'm, I'm anxious to go out there. I'm, I'm going to go to the gym after this and have a little lunch. Then I'm going to practice all day, feel dark, and get up tomorrow and do it again. Yes. <laughs> so motivational, so inspirational. Your story, you, your dreams, your new dream. So excited for you. I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader. I'm going to find out where you're out practicing. I'm going to stop by. <laughs> and I'm going me. to give you a big hug. Yeah, it works for me. I'm, 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 I need all the support I can get. Uh, yeah, support is key. Thank you so much for joining me today. Everyone check out Dennis Walters, DennisWalters.com. Before I let you go, I have one question I ask all of my guests. And Gussie can answer too. <laughs> I always like to know as a country music singer songwriter, what is the one song that speaks to your heart and sums up the essence of your being? Uh, um, well, my favorite song is um, I Only Want to Be With You. I love that song. Yeah. I only uh, want to be with you. Yeah, that's it. That's my favorite song. It's so and, funny. I do a show called Living and Loving with Monique McCall, and I have that song in my show. Yeah, it's that's my favorite song. And uh, the ringer on my phone is Redneck Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that the other day. I was blown away. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, but I I really like uh, those. I I I'm I'm not the biggest country music fan, but I I like it. I enjoy it because it tells it tells stories. Don't tell it's, me that. It's, <laughs> it's it's great. I like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I 
I'm a moderate music fan, but I I like all different genres. I it just for me it, it's the song that that I like. You know, I, I like I like music a lot. I think it's 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 it has a lot of positive influence on people, and it's uh, it, it's 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 something we need in this world. It's you, you watch a show or you're just sitting there. There's nothing better than than good music. It's a it's one of the gifts, one of the many gifts. Yeah. And you are such a gift. Dennis, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Gussie. I know you're out there. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, he's, for he's me. taking a nap. <laughs> he's like, I'm on break. Yeah, he is. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, okay. Monique, for having us on, and uh, I wish you all the best. And thank you. Hope to see you again soon. You too. So, thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Thank you, Dennis. In Dennis's words, everyone, get out. Try to do something that's impossible. Remember, each day is a new day. So start anew. Lead with your heart and the rest will follow. And if your dream doesn't work out, in Dennis's words, get a new dream. Thank you again, everyone. Get out, live, love, enjoy this beautiful holiday season. I'm Monique McCall, country music singer, songwriter, uh, recording artist. Look forward to seeing you on the next next episode. Super big hugs, everybody. Love you all. Bye, Dennis. Bye. Merry Christmas. You take.